So aside from all that we've discussed in Chapter 4 already, it's really not that complicated. Okay, a rising parcel of air will cool. It expands and cools, okay? But the other thing we talked about in Chapter 4 that is if you take a chunk of air and you cool it down, you can go ahead and um, cool it down to the dew point temperature, right? And you can get um, the vapor in that chunk of air to go ahead and condense or liquefy after you reach 100% relative humidity by reaching the dew point temperature. So what that looks like basically if it happens at upper elevations is a cloud, right? Clouds are milky white because water has turned from a vapor into a liquid. Those bonds have formed, its kinetic energy is it's slowed down a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but oftentimes clouds tend to have um, relatively flat bottoms. There are kind of flat clouds we call stratus type clouds, and then there are fluffy clouds that we talk, call um, cumulus type of clouds. So regardless if they're fluffy, even, they will have flat bottoms. So um, in other words, if you're drawing clouds in general, you know, you, you usually don't draw a cloud like that. Okay, if you're looking at it edge on, usually there's an elevation, they have flat bottoms. Okay, this is maybe a type of cumulus cloud. Um, stratus clouds would be just kind of flat, that sort of thing. But the point is, is that if this is the ground, okay, that's the geosphere, there's an elevation, okay, distance above the ground to which you had to raise that chunk of air cooling down all the way to reach the dew point temperature, and that's called the lifting condensation level. So lifting condensation level, or LCL, is the base of the cloud. Okay? Um, so here's the deal. When you go ahead and lift a, a, a cloud up to the point where condensation begins, it begins going from a vapor to a liquid within that cloud, one of the things that we said is that as water condenses, goes from a vapor to a liquid, energy is released. It's what we call an exothermic energy is released. So basically in that cloud, um, kind of think of it started getting kind of toasty because of this latent heat of, would be latent heat of condensation, right? Gosh, was that 600 calories per gram of water vapor that liquefies, of water vapor that condenses. 600 calories are released, okay? so. What that does then is oftentimes the parcel of air will continue to rise while it, while it has condensation going on. But that little bit of heat of condensation, latent heat of con condensing where the vapor is liquefying, that then kind of takes the edge off of or kind of dampens the rate at which that chunk of air will cool as it rises and expands. So we have something called the wet adiabatic rate um, the wet adiabatic rate is only 5 degrees, okay? And the abbreviation for wet adiabatic rate, as you might imagine, is WAR, or WAR, the weight, wet adiabatic rate. You have a chunk of air that's rising, but you have condensation going on within that chunk of air. Why? Because it's cool enough, it's like below the dew point temperature. It's at 100% relative humidity. Okay, so the wet adiabatic rate, and the reason it's less than the dry adiabatic rate is because energy is released as water vapor condenses or liquefies, is only 5 degrees Celsius cooling for every 1,000 meters that chunk of air rises. Wet adiabatic rate. So let's look at an example. Um, here we have, notice that each white line represents rising 1,000 meters, okay? Um, so at first, actually, can you see where, um, well, you'll see here in a minute, but for the first, uh, it looks like 3,000 meters, so for like three segments, it's gonna rise and it's gonna be, at, gonna cool at the dry adiabatic rate of dun, 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 10 degrees Celsius per 1,000 meters. So it looks like we're starting out with the same um, surface temperature of a blob as it ascends, 32 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm, I think. 
The first 1,000 meters it rises, no condensation, um, <coughs> and it will cool down 10 degrees from 32 to 22. The next 1,000 meters it rises from 1,000 to 2,000, it will cool down 10 degrees Celsius. It'll go from 22 to 12. Okay, one more chunk of, one more set of 1,000 meters it will ascend, and it will continue to cool at 10 degrees Celsius for 1,000 meters. So you can see where it went from 12 degrees Celsius to 2 degrees Celsius. Now, for this particular chunk of air, that is the dew point temperature. Will that be the dew point temperature for every chunk of air? No. It depends upon um, the it depends upon the relative humidity in that chunk of air. But I don't know if you can see it, but there's kind of some clouds right there. So at about 3,000 meters, this particular chunk of air has cooled to 2 degrees Celsius, and that is the dew point temperature, the temperature at which condensation begins. So we see it rising for another um, 2,000 meters. Okay, and as it rises, you're going to see, and you should, I think you should be able to do a little math problem like this. As it rises, you'll see it cool now 5 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 meters it rises. And if you're like me, when I get in, I go from positive Celsius to negative Celsius, I have to concentrate. So notice then when it goes from 3,000 uh, meters to 4,000 meters, it's going to cool, but now it's condensing in that region. So it's going to cool at 5 degrees Celsius per that 1,000. So it goes, it goes 2, 2, 1, 0, negative 2, sorry, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I missed an extra one in there. But anyway, if you take 2 and from 2, subtract 5, you get negative 3. How's that? Okay, and I've got one more to reveal. Of course, negative 3 and you subtract 5, that'll be negative 8, right? Okay, so negative 8 degrees Celsius. So that's an example of applying the wet adiabatic rate.